welcome back! And I mean it more than I have at any point. Uh, it's so great to virtually see your faces. Welcome back to D&D Beyond. My name is Amy Dallin. I am your host here at D&D Beyond, now a part of the Wizards of the Coast family. Joe Starr, how you doing? Uh, just excited to be a part of the mothership now. We've missed you. We're excited to be back. Stay tuned for more good stuff coming. And of course, because you know I love the month of June, a happy pride. <laughs> uh, spread some love today in honor of that. Uh, and then join us as we get into today's subject. We are going to discuss some amazing magic items for fighters. Today, we are going to look at an article written by the wonderful Damon Cook for dndbeyond.com, which uh, a link is for which is running in chat right now, running down 10 extremely cool magic items that might help uh, enhance, very protect, uh, otherwise Im improve your play experience as a fighter in Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to play favorites and pick some of our favorites from the list. Uh, and when we are done with that, we're going to take some questions from chat and do a little bit of Q&A. So, Joe, to start me off, why would I want magic items as a fighter? When should I get them? How? What What, what do you think here? Well, you know, um, mechanically, especially for like a low-level fighter, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of your friends are doing weird stuff with slinging spells and hiding and sneaking and, you know, key points and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes, especially as a low-level fighter, I think, you know, you, you swing at something. And that's kind of it. You start to feel a little left out. Um, and so I love um, being able to use uh, magical items specifically for like martial classes, just to give them like a little bit of oomph, right? Like that's so part of the fantasy genre, you know, the warrior king that had magic boots, you know, or, or whatever. And um, I think it's, that's so ingrained with, uh, with martial fighters, that one little like extra piece of zhuzh that makes them extraordinary. So yeah, I think um, uh, magic items, not only just like fun uh, for the fighters at your table, but I think essential. And of course, sometimes they can prove very, uh, just having a magic item of any kind can be the difference between successfully hit damaging uh, one of those darn resistant monsters and not. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, if you're if you're curious about sort of distributing those magic items, as we always say when we do these rundowns, uh, we don't recommend pressuring your DM for a specific item. The level of items that are available in their world uh, is up to them to determine. Um, but you know, it is fun to brainstorm the kinds of things that might make for a fun build. And there may be a point in time if they're like, "Hey, what's the kind of thing you'd like to find?" You will be armed with some very fun answers. Yeah. You know, it's so, funny. It, maybe it's because I'm a forever DM, Amy, but uh, I ne I've never thought about I've only ever asked a DM for a weapon once and it's on this list and we'll get into it. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I think just as a forever DM, I've never even considered the idea of as a player asking for a magic item for my DM. It like, has never crossed my mind. Joe, do you have one off this list that you definitely want to make sure you arm your next fighter with? Yeah. So. Um, uh, I, you know what? I will. I'll jump in with the first one that I requested from my DM and was soundly denied. Um, and that's the weapon of warning uh, for our Netherdeep campaign. Um, since I was playing this like weapon of war, you know, just like this thing built to go out and just destroy hordes and, and stuff. I said, "Hey, Michael Galvis, can I have a weapon of warning?" And he said, "Under no circumstances, absolutely not." <laughs> um but i i i love this weapon a lot i think it, it's a little broken it's a little it's a little op as a uh, as the kids say um but to me as a as a as a dm i think this is um a macguffin item i think this is something incredibly overpowered you give to someone in your party on day one at level one it's way too powerful why do they have it um but cool you love your cool magically uh overpowered ring that you know great but someone's probably trying to find it um you know someone's probably after you and i i think let's that talk about is it and why give and take absolutely so this this why might they want to grab it from you why might your dm want to be careful with this one it is because 
yeah. the weapon of warning is a little spidey sense that you wear on your hand. When you've got a mm-hmm. weapon of warning, you will not uh, be surprised. Uh, this magic weapon warns you of danger while the weapon's on your person. You have advantage on initiative rolls. In addition, you and any of your companions within 30 feet of you can't be surprised except when incapacitated by something other than non-magical sleep. It magically awakens you and your companions within range if any of you are sleeping naturally when combat begins. Yeah, uh, this is so- Sting. This is, uh, this is way too, this is bigger Sting, honestly. So yeah, so this is why uh, I, it, it's, <laughs> this is such kind of an overpowered thing that I think you should just uh, hand it to a level one character and add consequences to it. I love that concept. And of course, it is uncommon as a rarity level, uh, which means it is not the easiest to find, but it's also not one of those that they like. It it is appropriate to hand to a low level character. I think if you're a DM and you're trying to work around this, I would take inspiration from things like Spider-Man stories, um, from from things like, you know, think about what value Sting has and how you can still challenge uh, Frodo, even though he has it. Um, So that is your your weapon of warning is pick number one. Now, for me, from this list, I was particularly enamored um, of the Flame Tongue Sword Frostbrand Sword combo. This is just a nice (laughs) basic way to take your... Look, I I chose to be a fighter because I want to hit things. So I'm not looking for a bunch of like other options that aren't that. I just want to do that in like a fancy way. And that is where these wonderful items come in. Uh, I love that they were paired by Damon for this article. In a sense, they're twins. They each shed light under certain circumstance and deal additional elemental damage. Um, they work a little bit differently. One will take a bonus action, a bonus action to activate, but has some stronger benefits. Uh, the other one is always going to be active, but has some weaker benefits. Um, the flame tongue is going to add 2d6 fire damage to any target it hits while it is uh, ablaze. And they last until you douse those flames or drop the sword. Drop the sword. Um, the frost brand uh, is going to uh, give an extra one d six cold damage and lend you resistance to fire damage. Uh, in freezing temperature, it, sh- it, it sheds bright light. Uh, and also, when you draw it, you can put out non magical flames around you. I love the idea of having both of these and having like the fire. And then the frost that then puts out all fire except your sword, which is suddenly like if you can arrange for everyone to be in a candlelit cavern or 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 hall, uh, this would be very cool and dramatic. Yes, I I like a sword with utility. I mean, honestly, what is there not to love with your standard issue flame or ice sword? Like this is these are like stapled coolest things, you know. Um, I I I think this is the kind of stuff you you know you uh that that you loot off of a boss you know this is this is something your your uh your fighter has that cool moment of or your party has that cool moment of earning you know you you've killed your first like uh kind of big bad and you know the fighter gets handed the flame tongue sword uh yeah i mean i, I mean what is what is D without a sword that's on fire i i joe what's your next favorite on the shopping list of fighter items Okay, uh, I love the um, uh, the Ring of Free Action. I think is is really fun. I, I think this one's tricky, but I, I think if you approach it the right way, it's it's really really cool. So, um, you know, martial characters, you're you're really depending, I think, on range of motion and action economy and stuff like that, and you know, stuff like Entangled or Web or Hold Person. Um, uh, you know, restraint and paralyzation kind of focused debuff spells uh, can really kind of blow it for you and, and uh, you know, make make combat a little less fun, make things a little more frustrating uh, for your fighters in your game. Uh, the Ring of Free Action uh, makes you immune to things like that. So while you're wearing the Ring of Free Action, uh, magic can't restrain you, it can't paralyze you. Uh, it also protects you from magic that would also kind of derail your movement a little bit, like Ring of Frost cantrips or uh, the Slow Spell. Uh, and you'll also be able to uh, walk through uh, difficult terrain, uh, magically created difficult terrain, uh, 
um, without any kind of issue. So I, I really love, um, I really love this, this ring. I think that the trick here is like, as a DM, you've given someone the ring. Now you gotta let them use it, right? Like you can't, if, if you're going to give your game the tool, like you can't then just have them fight a series of wizards that will never try to debuff a fighter just because in your head, you know that they have the ring. You've got to give them that like Wonder Woman trench moment where they're just like deflecting, you know, debuffs left and right. Like you've got to really like let the ring have its moment. Because it's, it's, it's great powerful, advice, it can, but I think it's pretty cool. It, we, we can all relate to the impulse to sort of be like, well, how am I going to challenge them if they can walk right through it? And you, of course, always want yeah. to challenge them, but you also want to let them do the cool stuff that you've put in the game for them to do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this was also uh, one that was was on my list before you, you stole it there, Joe. But I love the concept of this as as a way to think about the way that I picked the sword that hits extra hard because me, fighter, like hit things, you know, but that's not. I love the way that this ring speaks to the utility of a variety of items that can just make your fighter play experience better in ways that you might not immediately think of when you're like, want, want better sword. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we all want better sword, uh, but this is a great example of other kinds of things that are gonna pair with your strengths and weaknesses. And also uh, this ring I think can be appropriately summarized with a nobody gonna break my stride, nobody gonna slow me down in a ring. Yes, Gotta keep that is all you get or else we get dinged. Uh, but I'm... no, you're absolutely right. I, I would say that um, if you want to kind of go into um, like Hanna-Barbera level, uh, you know, stuff, your character has to sing that to turn the <laughs> ring on. But again, only very briefly, if you are on a Twitch stream, uh, as there are rules about this, and I just wanted to give Joe a heart <laughs> There are rules. Um... <laughs> My next pick is also going to be, uh, an uh, it pairs well with a fancier sword, is a maybe be just a little bit harder to hit. Now, as a fighter, you're usually going to want to be able to be up in the thick of it, uh, helping shield, not always, there are different play styles, obviously, um, but you, you, you're you often going to want that ability to to be able to shrug off some danger uh, in, in uh, before it can get to your friends. Um, and that's a time when you might want adamantine armor. Suddenly occurs to me that it could be adamantine. I do not know. Um, did not check on that one. But uh, adamantine armor is made of one of the most durable substances uh, that you can access in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and it is going to mean that while you're hitting it, while you're wearing it, you are crit proof. Doesn't make you harder to hit, but even in the best case scenario uh, where they get a 20 and they automatically hit you, they are not going to get to deal some extra critical damage on you while you are wearing your adamantine armor, which is, whew, I would be heartbreaking as a DM. Not that I'm evil, um, it, except it wouldn't be because it would be such Ooh. a cool moment and they would be so excited, but... I don't, I, it's, I, I'm emotionally torn. Um, it does have a cousin, Mithril, obviously, if you want your uh, non-heavy armor option that's mm -hmm. not gonna, that's gonna work for your more Dexy characters. Um, but Joe, yep. how would you deploy adamantine armor? Um, it, for one thing, I, yeah, no, you're right. I, I do like this one. It, uh, just that little extra bit of, um, of, of, of crit proofing, I, I think is, uh, I think it's just nice and, and tasty, it's, especially if you've got a player that just, you know, really enjoys just a, a, a thoroughly tanky uh, kind of experience. Um, I think uh, it, I, I think something like this is fun as like um, a prize in a in a in a fight or a contest or maybe like a wager. You know, uh, we'll put up your precious thing against this beautiful polished set of adamantine armor, you know, um, you know, something that's really going to just uh, give your fighter that like Marty McFly moment of like, you know, stops, turns back around to, to face Biff, you know, uh, to get into contest. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I, I, I think that's how it, that's how that's how I would uh, that's how I do this one. I really like. Okay having story attached to items it's i i like i like it when my players anytime they equip something or anytime they bring something out 
or any time that they remember that they're immune to crits that they can like connect it to like oh yeah because like 10 or 20 sessions i mean this is the ideal DD game they've had 20 sessions oh my god uh but you know like uh you know so many sessions ago i remember getting this and oh god that moment felt so so good uh so yeah i always love being able to to attach moments to items that beautifully put. Uh, and I love that I took that in the way of like, you know, as a history nerd, I'm like, every item has a history in the world. Like the things that led to it being developed and being out in the world, like the chain of, of mm-hmm. provenance that takes it from place to place. Um, and that final step where it arrives with your player should, as you're saying, should mean yeah. something. I love, that's a great. I love that. When you're, that when kid- you're- well, I was just mm-hmm. going to say, Amy, that the history, that's such a good way of putting it. And that's such a good point. You know, you you um you pull this off of a of a of a horrible bandit leader or something. You finally like storm their their keep, and you know these guys that have been uh, hitting this entire region. And you know you have this on. It's got a history. It's got a reputation. Are you now being mis- is it a dread pirate Robert situation where you're now being mistaken for that guy? Do the people that hire him notice you later on when you unexpectedly walk into the capital or something like that? I, I, yeah, the history of items. I think that is and it doesn't you don't have to write eight pages you know to give an item historical implication uh you can write three sentences and and get so much out of that uh i the fantastic advice for building meaning into the those things that we equip ourselves with every day but you know who really makes the rings of war the weapons of warning that uh that make the difference for us joe do you have one more pick of a fave from this list that you want to pick up as a fighter. Oh, indeed I do. Um, uh, in fact, I, I think I was like, what if we each talk about three specifically? Cause I had three that I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, being the boss has its benefits, Talon. Um, I love the, the, the dragon wing bow. So, so, so much. This is from, uh, this is from Fizben's treasury of dragons. Um, uh, the effect is is really cool. It's it's just it's an extra one d six of damage from uh, whatever um, uh, chromatic whatever type of dragon. So chromatic, metallic, uh, gem, what have you, uh, whichever type of dragon infused the weapon with its breath. Um, and uh, in addition uh, to that damage, uh, ammunition is optional, which I love. I hate running out of arrows in this game. It sucks. Um, so the idea of having this like really cool like arrow producing bow um and then you add on to that the flavor of of it being empowered by like dragon magic so now you have this cool bow and when you you shoot that magic arrow like what's it look like to you does it look like uh, the smog firework from from Fellowship of the Ring, you know, does it have like a cool, you know, dragon punch sort of magic around it? Um, does that matter mechanically? No. But does it matter when I'm really painting a picture, when I'm killing something? Yes, it absolutely matters. Uh, so yeah, I, I love uh, I love this spell. It's super cool. Uh, no I, I, I love that this is a great pick and speaks to the fact that fighters are not all upfront tank types. You can easily be, uh, mm-hmm. as Mark Humes mm-hmm. played on our recent Unwelcome Spirit stream, uh, an archer type fighter, and you're gonna find different kinds of items that are gonna help you out uh, for those needs. Um, And I will say one that was new to me that I got very excited about in this article that I'm gonna make my final pick, uh, the Iron Bands of Binding. I love this pick. Uh, the Iron Bands of Binding are a rare, so this is one of those you wouldn't expect to encounter these before like fifth level or so. Um, it is not easy to come by these. They are pretty valuable, um, but it's a rusty iron sphere measuring three inches in diameter, which weighs one pound. You can use an action to speak the command word and throw the sphere at a huge or smaller creature you, that you can see within 60 feet of you. As the sphere moves through the air, it opens into a tangle of metal bands. Um, you make an attack roll to see if this thing will get its target. Uh, and if it works out, the target is restrained until you use the command word. Um, and if they fail that initial check, they can't try again for 24 hours. 
So as opposed to when normal, you're going to have, it's going to keep you contained for a while until you're able to Hulk smash your way out of it kind of challenge. Um, this is a very yeah. specialized thing, which means they have limits. Like you can't use it until the next, and use it again until the next dawn, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, missing that attack is just going to make it uh, uh, contract and become a sphere again. So it's a long shot move in some ways. You really need it to work and you really need them to fail. Um, and if not, it's not like you have another one in your pocket, most likely. Um, but it's a really cool option for maybe messing up your DM's plans. But I love the the way that Damon emphasizes in this article. Um, it's great for capturing rather than killing. Um, we know that mm -hmm. that's a DM. Different DMs will flavor that differently. Rules is written a me melee attack. You're always allowed to speci specify that it's non-lethal damage. But uh, this is another lovely canonical uh rules is written way to sort of disengage a fight um including one with someone huge which i just think is neat um using a little little ball of of restraints iron bands of binding yeah no super fun i think it it's uh it 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 gives you know just a little bit more uh tactical option uh to your fighter too you know just because uh, look you know a lot of uh, a lot of our mechanics a lot of our sweet fighter mechanics are just different kind of melee attacks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm playing a battle master right now and I, I really like it. But you know, it's like uh, I tripped you or I distracted you so that someone else could punch you and stuff like that. And I just love this like extra, um, just completely different move to add to your action economy. You know, oh cool, I have two attacks and then I'm gonna cast action surge and you know, uh, the, the giant Two thing attacks and a pokeball, that'll get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yep no yeah no that that is that and and then later on uh yeah you know space lich i choose you um it'll be uh no it's a it's an absolute blast no i i i, I dig this one a lot actually um so we do recommend yeah. uh check out all the items on this list because all 10 of them are very cool choices uh for you to potentially sew into your game the link to this article is running through chat or available in the video description down below and we would love to hear what other favorites y'all have or how you would use any of these if you want to add those in the comments.